Good morning. morning. Sunday has come, thank God. And this Sunday we are observing as the second last Sunday in the church here. We'll follow the order of worship as you find it in your bulletin for this morning. Uh, Today's service is right too, and the page numbers are indicated for you uh, if you should like to follow along with the lines of music in the hymn book. Our service today begins with our opening hymn, hymn number 538. Please note the verses, we'll sing verses 1 through 3 and verse 5. Please rise. O Jesus, who my debt did pay, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved in the Lord, 
Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. I now ask each of you in the presence of God who searches the heart, do you confess that you have sinned and you repent of your sins? Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and you desire forgiveness in his name? I do. Upon this, your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of God's word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May he comfort your heart by his holy absolution and strengthen you by his sacraments that your joy may be full. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your strength. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men.
The Lord be with you. Let us all pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who through thy dear Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has for our sakes established the kingdom of grace, that here in thy holy church we should believe the forgiveness of our sins. Inasmuch as thou art a God who hath no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. We pray thee graciously pardon all our sins through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for this, the second last Sunday in the church year, is written in Isaiah chapter 40, and we read there verses 9 to 11. It's written... Go on up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. Here ends the Old Testament lesson. Our psalmody for today, Psalm 50, we read responsively. The mighty one God, the Lord, has spoken and called the earth. The rising of the sun to its going down. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God will shine forth. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. Gather my saints together to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness for God If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all its fullness. Offer to God. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Here the epistle lesson, Second Thessalonians chapter one. We read there verses three through ten. It's written, we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast about you to the churches of God in your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and in the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering. Since indeed God considers it just to repay with afflictions those who afflict you and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. Here ends the epistle lesson. (laughs) 
The Holy Gospel for the second last Sunday of the church year is written in the gospel according to St. Matthew in the 25th chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. Please rise in honor of the gospel of our Lord Jesus. It's written, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Praise be to you, O Christ. We join the confession of our holy Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Our chief hymn for today, hymn 535, verses one through four.
Dear fellow redeemed, grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our portion of scripture for consideration this morning is a free text for today. It is recorded in Paul's epistle to the congregation in Rome, chapter 15, and we read just verse 13. I invite you to stand for this reading. The Apostle Paul says, Now may the God of hope fill you with complete joy and peace as you continue to believe, so that you overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, these are your words, and therefore they are the truth. We ask that you would increase our faith through them. Amen. Please be seated. Dear fellow redeemed, our portion of scripture this morning comes from towards the last chapters of the book of Romans. The apostle Paul has just systematically explained the Christian doctrine to that congregation. And he gets toward the end and he knows that they are going to suffer many hardships. And so he encourages them. He says, may the God of hope. We have a God who we can describe in many ways. Here the apostle Paul describes him as a God of hope. And this God of hope fills us with joy and peace in Christ. And he encourages that they continue to believe. Faith is not something that suddenly comes to a grinding halt. Faith isn't something that someone declares on one day and then that's it for the rest of their life. No, faith continues as we believe, he says. So that this faith would well up in us that confidence that we have and overflow to others by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is my encouragement to you today, especially on this Sunday where we observe the last judgment, that you would have hope as you continue to believe. I grew up in Australia where, in terms of spiritual hope, it was very lacking. At the time when I was a young man, I heard the statistic that less than 2% of people were in church of a Sunday, believed the Christian message. I remember in the eighth grade at my school, at my school, there was a, a young man in my friend group. His name was Bill. Now, Bill was big. Bill had muscles in the eighth grade. And he was also very smart, and he was also a very friendly young man. There was, however, another boy in the eighth grade who decided he would let his sinful nature take the best of him, and he decided that he did not like Bill. And Bill put up with him for a while, his insults and so on, until one day, this, this boy decided sinfully that he was going to fight Bill. We were waiting for our class to start, we were outside, and he came up to Bill and grabbed him in a headlock and started to try to hit him. And I'll never forget what happened next. Bill was over like this in the headlock, and he put one arm over the guy's head, the other one under his legs, he picked him up, flipped him over and threw him down onto the ground. Fight over. We were all standing there going, whoa, Bill is strong. And I thought to myself, mental note, do not ever make Bill angry. Well, even though I attended a secular public school, in those days, they did allow a Bible society to come in and hand out 
Bibles to the eighth graders. Well, Bill started reading his Bible. And in fact, he got right into it. He became very enthusiastic about the Bible. And he would carry it between classes. He was always reading it. Bill became a Christian. And he was so excited about it that he would even, between classes, he would, if he saw something that was interesting to him, he'd point it out to everyone and say, hey, look what Jesus says right here. And everyone would be like, oh, yeah, that's great. After all, they didn't want to make Bill mad. <laughs> His excitement, it, it was just, it would rub off on people. It was contagious. And I would encourage you today to be like Bill. Let that hope that you have in Christ overflow to others. Share your joy with others in that God of hope. Now, I had grown up in a liberal Lutheran church. And when I was in my teenage years, the, the church that we joined, we moved, and I had to join a new church. I was not, I would say I was not being fed the truth because I didn't understand certain things about Christianity. I can even remember one day thinking to myself, you know, the next time we go to church, I should stop and ask the pastor, how can I be sure I'm going to go to heaven? Now, I never had that opportunity in that church that I was in. Because one day I got home from high school, I got off the bus, and I went into our house. In the living room was this strange American man talking to my mother. Turns out, he was a missionary, a pastor from the US belonging to this ELS Synod. Pastor Bill Mack was his name. I instantly took a liking to him. He was funny, he explained things so well, and it was decided that he would take our family through a course of instruction. I can remember that next week, that first lesson with him. He explained things so well. It's like he laid out God's plan of salvation in a way that I'd never heard it before. He explained the fall into sin by Adam and Eve and how from that time forward, all of us are born with a sinful nature. We are all sinners. And he, he told me that I deserved God's punishment, because God is holy and he cannot tolerate sin. All of us, including you, we all are sinners and we deserve God's condemnation. We deserve that judgment. And yet, he explained that God still loved his sinful people. And for that reason alone, he sent his son into this world to be our substitute. His son was born as a true man. And this God-man lived a life that you and I have not lived. It was a pristine life, a life of perfect devotion to his heavenly father. He kept every single commandment. He did not sin once. He was perfect. And even though he was innocent, evil men tracked him down to a city called Jerusalem, they falsely accused him and they nailed him to a cross. When Jesus was suffering, he explained, he wasn't suffering with his own shame and guilt and sin, but rather it was with mine, it was with yours. He took the whole world's shame and sin on himself and there he suffered hell. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He made that full payment, and he died. And we know that God accepted that sacrifice for us, that full payment, because he raised him up on the third day. Jesus arose from the dead, showing that he had defeated sin, he had defeated Satan, he had defeated death, he had defeated hell and condemnation for you and for me and for all who believe in him through faith. And so I could know because of that message 
that I was going to heaven. I can remember that evening lying in my room and on my bed and just being on a spiritual high, just thinking to myself, I am going to go to heaven for sure. I know it with certainty because it wasn't based on anything I had done. It was all based on Christ and what he had done. And that's the same joy and confidence and hope that you also can have through faith in Christ. It wasn't too many weeks later that we decided to join Pastor Max Church. And after one of the lessons one time, he handed me a brochure. It was to a seminary in the US, which he explained was where young men can go to train to become pastors. And at first I, I brushed him off, I'm not, not interested in that, but eventually I found myself on a plane flying to the United States and starting seminary classes. There I met my beautiful wife who was at the college nearby, blessed to be married, and we have now four beautiful and talented children. The Lord blessed my work, and I was privileged to be a missionary in two different congregations, and now I serve our synod's board for home outreach, as does your pastor, and there are so many opportunities and blessings that have come from that. Letting your certain hope in Christ overflow to others. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be or become a pastor or a missionary in order to let your hope overflow to others. No, notice that the Apostle Paul in Romans, he's not just talking to pastors or missionaries, he's talking to the congregation there. He's encouraging everyone to let their hope that they have in Christ, that hope which fills them up until it's overflowing, that knowledge of what Christ has done, that it can overflow to others. Notice that the apostle doesn't mention any kind of a retirement age, (laughs) that there's a time when we no longer need to have that hopeful joy to others. Remember, Moses started his ministry when he was 80. (laughs) And remember that this is not done out of a slavish demand in order to get into heaven, but rather this is done out of gratitude to the Lord, thankfulness for what he has done for us. And there are great needs. First of all, think of the world around us and the despair that we see in the lives of others, people who need the hope that we have been privileged to enjoy. They need to hear the truth about their sin and the truth about their savior. They need that encouragement. You know, we can look around our society and see the statistics that seems like Christianity, numbers of church goers are shrinking. But you know, another statistics that is actually increasing is the number of people who are unexposed to Christianity. In 2020, that percentage was 18%. What an opportunity. People who have not heard the message that could hear that message of sin and the message of grace through Christ. The other reason we want to continue to do this is that we know that that day is drawing near. We don't know when it will be. Judgment Day, Christ could return in a thousand years from now. He might return tonight. We don't know. We want to be prepared ourselves. We want to remain in the word. We want to remain in the sacraments, the means of grace whereby God continues to feed us. We want to have a faithful shepherd who continues to feed us as we journey through this life. And we want to grow in our faith and knowledge of the Lord. Because that day is coming. But on that day of judgment, you can look forward to that with joy. 
Because dear friends, God loves you, he has forgiven you in Christ, and Christ has defeated hell for you. He took the condemnation that you and I deserved. And so for you and all other believers, on that day when the Lord sends his holy angels to gather up everyone to be gathered before his throne, God the Father is going to look at you, dear believer. He is going to see how Christ clothes you, that that righteousness that you were given in your baptisms. And he is going to see not your mistakes and failures. He's going to see his son's perfect life for you. And you will hear the words of the son. Come, you who are blessed by my father. Receive your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Amen. And we continue with the create in me. Oh, almighty God, most merciful Father, we thank you for gathering us together in your house today to hear your holy word. So rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that being ever mindful of the end of all things and the day of your last judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here and dwell with you forever hereafter. Merciful God, you know all things. And our hearts are heavy because of sin and guilt. We ask that you would relieve the burden on us by the gospel that we've heard. Comfort us in the knowledge of the forgiveness of our sins. Strengthen and sustain our faith and be with us now and always. Keep us even for eternal life with you in heaven. Hear our prayer, most merciful God, for our evangelical Lutheran synod for all of its congregations and its pastors and their families. We pray especially a prayer of thanks for the Kirkos who are with us this morning and ask your continued blessing on them and on uh, their ministry to our congregations. Merciful God, please be with and bless and help all who are sick and homebound and shut in. We ask for your help and blessing for the walk-ins that you would grant them joy and peace Uh, We pray that you would grant reconciliation throughout their family based on your wonderful gospel. Please bless the Sephorics as they continue uh, their struggle against cancer. Please be with and bless and grant your help and healing to your servant, Rich Boley, uh, as he struggles with, uh, with pain in his joints. We ask that you would grant relief and comfort and your peace to him. Merciful God, look down from heaven and see this little congregation of yours that you bought with a great price. Please remember us in your mercy. Strengthen and sustain us and keep offenses far from us and grant us your joy and keep us even for everlasting life with you in heaven and use us to accomplish the purposes of your church, of your word. These and whatsoever other prayers we have, we bring to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Amen.
Our service will continue now with the preface to the service of Holy Communion. And for those of you who are here as our guests and visitors today, uh, if, if we have little children or those unknown to us who should appear at the Lord's table, please notice that our practice is to pronounce a blessing. And we invite you please to see this as an invitation to take some of the kinds of lessons that Pastor Kirko was talking about this morning to find out more about us and our beliefs, most especially about our Lord Jesus and his church and his word and his kindness and his grace to us. Uh, we invite you to that and hope that you will, will, uh, will see that as an opportunity. That would give us much joy. Our service continues now with the preface to the service of Holy Communion on page seven in your bulletin. The congregation is invited, please, to rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, whole soul, he took the cup after supper, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, Lamb of God, you 
take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. Please be seated. John, would you be willing to usher us up this morning, please? Uh, Six on each side for those who are coming forward for Holy Communion. And our distribution hymn for today is hymn number 320. Uh, Come for all things are now ready.
our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who has now bestowed upon you his holy body and precious blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins, strengthen and preserve you a true faith unto life everlasting. Be filled with joy. Your sins are forgiven. Peace be with you. Amen. Please rise as we join together in singing the Nunc Dimittis, page nine in your bulletin. We'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, O Almighty God, that you've refreshed us with these your salutary gifts. And we beseech you of your mercy to strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated for our final hymn, hymn 534. And please note our verses. We'll sing verses 7 and 10 and 14.
Once again, everyone, good morning. Thank you so much for the chance to be together here with you in God's house today. And God bless you by all the things that you've heard and received from the dear Lord Jesus this morning. A few things to bring to your attention by way of announcement as we come to the end of our service. First of all, in the back of your bulletin, uh, the congregation praise is a little uh, devotional tool for you that you can use for devotions in your home. You can modify it however you like. And on the page right before that, you'll find uh, the announcements for what's going on here at Redeemer this week. Um, I want to make sure to invite everyone to stick around after our uh, worship service lets out. We'll go down the hallway this way and into the parish hall uh, where uh, we'll get ready for um, a a session that I hope you all will be involved in uh, that uh, Pastor, by the way, I should say thank you. Thank you, Pastor Kirko, for being here with us today. Thank you for delivering the sermon. Thank you. And Rachel, thank you guys very much for being here. It's so great to have you with us today. Um, We want uh, uh, everybody to be involved in the session that Pastor Kirk will be, kind of a planning session or uh, an evaluative session, I guess, that he'll be leading us through during the Bible class hour today. Uh, So we're going to set aside our regular uh, uh, Bible study plans in order to do that with him. I hope that you'll come and share your thoughts and your your, uh, insights and so forth. Uh, And then once our uh, Sunday school and Bible class hour has gotten uh, through, we've also put together a, a, a little lunch so that, uh, so that we can all eat together. Pastor, you uh, stay for lunch, yes? Okay, so um, let's everybody stick around and have lunch together, if you would. Yeah, I mean, even if, you, uh, uh, even if you weren't thinking of it, I mean, if you have other plans, I understand, but please do stick around if you, if you would, and, and we'll have, uh, have lunch together. I would like to say a special thank you to everybody whose uh, last-minute uh, efforts have pulled us together a little lunch for today. And then afterwards, uh, please note, Wednesday is the eve of Thanksgiving, so we'll plan on gathering here for a service at four o'clock. And and on Thursday, uh, please note, we will not have our Skype Bible class as usual because of the Thanksgiving holiday. God willing, we'll be back together to do that the following week. And then next Sunday, God granted, our schedule will be as usual. We'll have our nine o'clock worship service with Sunday school and adult Bible study at 1030. Notice that in the bulletin also at this point, we have Wednesday services planned for Advent. Uh, Wednesday services, December 6, 13, and 20. And it occurred to me afterwards that it would be a good idea for me to ask the congregation, since this is my first time spending Advent with you guys, I'm excited about it. But maybe you guys have some customs that I'm not aware of. Um, and, uh, and maybe I should know that. So if there's anything that uh, you guys would like me to know, please do make sure to, to, to fill me in about special customs or special uh, considerations as we get close to uh, Advent and Christmas. Um, we should note that we have a special year this year, and so kind of tentatively at this point, I'm still open to anything, but kind of tentatively at this point, I don't think that we will have a Sunday morning service on Christmas Eve but rather on Christmas Eve, we'll have a service in the evening to celebrate Christmas Eve and then the service of uh, of Holy Communion for Holy Christmas Day the next morning. And so that's kind of what we're thinking about and planning at this point right now. But like I said, I'm I'm open to anything you guys would like to let me know that we should do differently. My, My ears are open, so... Thank you guys again for the chance. Oh, let me make sure to tell you this too. Uh, Copies of the brochure are out there, out in the narthex. So please grab some of these and share them with your friends and family and neighbors and so forth. Um, Copies of the November President's Newsletter and the November Congregational Newsletter are still out there in the narthex too. December stuff will be coming out here pretty soon. So um, again, I think that's everything I got for announcements right now, unless there's anything in me. Oh, Norm, you got something. Um, I, uh, I was at the meeting, I was present at the meeting where my membership papers were acted upon. So I and my family now are officially members at Redeemer. And I'm so ex- it only took like 10 months, but I'm so glad to finally be here. And uh, I want to thank you guys again for everything that you do for me and for Heather and for our family. God be with and bless all of you until we meet again. And God grant it. I'll see you soon.
Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another advantage you have a cake is if you're not saved, just save for the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Norm. Thank you, everybody. God's peace and blessings be with you. Oh, yes. Carol. There's a ladies' guild meeting, too. Today. There's a ladies' guild meeting today. Okay, so we will, we will gather for the ladies' guild meeting like, like, like right now, right, Carol? Yes? Okay. So thanks, everybody, and God's peace and blessings to all of you until we meet again. And God grant it, I'll see you Sunday.